So I decided I'm not doing that again. I'm going to set it up. And that's when I built this, only to find out that the FCC frowns upon such dinky little toys being in space. <laughs> Rats. Okay. I'm going to pass this around. This is an actual flight hardware system. It's made out of a 3D printed material called WinForm, and it is ready to put the CPU back in, run it through a vibration test, fold it up, and we're ready to go. Okay. I just got to get it licensed. Okay. So let's just pass that around and check that out. Okay. So in 2021, this was getting pretty serious. I have built a couple of satellites. I haven't flown anything yet, but everything's ready to go. I think I need to do something different. Minicubes is rather generic. And also, if you look up Minicubes, there's a program called Minecraft, I guess, that Minicubes are a thing in there. And I did not know that when we named it. <laughs> okay, quick explanation. Back in the 90s, I wrote video games, okay? I am sick of video games, okay? I've published several of my own, including a game called Subversion. It was out before the, the other thing. But we had a game called Subversion. It was pretty fun. I sold a lot, and then somebody bounced me a check for $70,000, and that was the end of my company. Cash flow is king, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what your net worth is. If you didn't get the money into bank, you're gone. All right. So we rebranded to Cube, and then we launched our first satellite January of 2022. Woohoo! Goes out the door, and nothing. Want to come get a closer look? It's made out of the same wind form material, but we launched it. And even better, we got it on tape. <laughs> okay, so this is the Firefly Alpha upper stage. This is the payload section. And you can see right here, we've got a couple of payloads. That's not us. Here's another payload. That's not us. We're actually on the other side where you can't see us. All right. But they were kind enough to film the whole thing. You're going to see a glitch in the uh, video, and right after that, you'll see our satellite flying off into deep blue space. There we go. Thank you. The cool part is we got signal back for seven days because they put it in the wrong orbit, and everything goes back into the atmosphere because they missed it by 50 kilometers. Okay? The difference between three years in seven days is 50 kilometers. Kind of sucks. <laughs> All right. So this is what we're building now. We've kind of evolved from the little itty bitty pocket cube. And I don't like building these because they're kind of, in my word, monstrous. It's a big satellite in my world. Um, of course, the uh, National Reconnaissance Office looks at that and goes, <laughs> Okay, well, I'm about to blow everybody's mind because what we do in this box, this is a 6P pocket cube, and we call it Aurora. That's her with her solar panels all the way exposed. Um, by the way, the solar panels are on the other side. That is our prototype receiver system for synthetic aperture radar. It'll be the smallest ever constructed if it works. If it works. Okay. So in this tiny little box, we have a synthetic aperture radar. We have the radar emitter. We have an optical telescope, and we have a LIDAR system, okay? in addition to all the normal sensors that would go around. That's it. It weighs 1.5 kilograms total. And you'll notice I'm going to be giving all of my measurements in metric, which is a logical system. Okay? Satellites are built in metric. If you don't build them in metric and you launch them and you're working with the international community, you usually end up splattering them into the Martian atmosphere. We don't do that. We do everything here. And when I say telescope, I'm not kidding. It's a telescope. It's a full schmidt cassegrain telescope. This is the optical blank that makes one. Okay. Aim a telescope at Earth. Right. Okay, well, this, in this space, we make a 300 millimeter focal length telescope come to life. Okay, because they are so sensitive to dust, they do not exist outside in the real world. They exist in the clean room. Okay? But here's a blank. We actually carve it out of this. Okay? Hmm? Clean room. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> there are different levels of clean, and um, where we're launching from is a, with class 100,000. We do our work in a class 10,000. That means 10,000 particles per square foot. That's it. All right. Right now, you're sitting at about two to three million particles per square foot in this room. Okay. What? No, that's a clean room. That is, this is this is clean. But wait, wait do you see when it gets ugly, messy? All right. Well, this satellite also needs its own deployer, so we had to invent all of that technology. Again, we use something very very sophisticated. It's called a spring. You open the door. It's under tension, the spring throws it out the door. This is how satellites have been launched from spacecraft since the beginning. Okay. So why do all this? Well, we want to build an entire constellation that monitors Earth's resources, but not in the way that you think. Okay. When you think of satellites, anybody can tell me, what do, you, what do you get when you're observing Earth? Nine times out of ten, what do you see? What do they show you? Images, cloud cover, all the little pretty things that your human eye can see. Our systems aren't looking for that. Our systems use machine learning to create a pattern of life. We're looking for anomalies. We're looking for things that don't belong. So if you're looking at a forest and you suddenly see a kind of vaporous area in the forest, what do you think that is? Fire. fire. It's the start of a fire. So our systems are designed to talk to each other, relay that information to the ground as quickly as possible, and then relay that information to the person who needs it. And it's called low resource machine learning. We do all of this on a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. Okay? But in order to do that, you have to have a couple of things. Okay? One is the CPU can't be busy with all these sensors. That's bad. Okay. CPU should be busy with data management and analyzing that information that comes in, not running the actual sensors. So we have a serverless system that we build. Okay. This little toy is called Space Hex. Yeah, um, Elon's coming after me. <laughs> um, we got to come up. If anybody has a better name for this, we're all ears. And by the way, yes, it is in the shape of a Q. Because why not? Um, I'm going to turn this little bad boy on. We can pass this around, but please do not flip the big metal switch. Okay. All right. Now, the screens are for the humans. But each of these components is modular. Each of these modules can work completely independent of the computer. As long as they have power, they will record their information. And as soon as they're connected to a CPU, they will start talking about that data. So they're a complete collection device on their own, and the CPU is doing what the CPU needs to do. Okay. Now, it's actually recording things. Um, simulated thruster doesn't work with the real thing here in an atmosphere, but we simulate it. The gyroscope works. The accelerometers work. Okay. It's completely battery operated and should run for about six hours on a charge. There are no solar panels. They don't work very well down here. You know, it's hard to build something when half of the gear you're working on doesn't work here. Okay? It involves some interesting testing. But now, I talk about all this. These are the things we, we want to improve. You can read it on the screen. But how does this relate to open source? Okay. Now, here's SpaceX. I kind of jumped the gun. We're open sourcing all of it. The hardware, the software, the methodologies, all of it. Okay? It should be hitting GitHub hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to build one, go build one. So why, again, there, there, why, why is this important? Why should we give this to you guys? Because you can do better than our team. There are some things that we have forgotten. The code is probably inefficient. Go have fun. Build a better one. Show me a better satellite, I'll talk to you. Okay. okay. Um, that's a quick way to get hired somewhere. Okay. And not just us. There are a lot of places that can do that. So this design is based on a Raspberry Pi. There's a compute module 4 in the core of this that's driving it. 
We use PICOs for everything else. All the components are available. Everything that's in there you can buy off the shelf, except for our telescope that will go in there. No, you can't have that. I am not giving you those that cost five grand each to make, okay? Unless you got $10,000, because you know I gotta make a profit. Uh, <laughs> so we've created this, and all of this is going open source very soon. We've already open sourced our track sat. This was a desktop unit that when you're working with satellites, it's hard to see them, right? And on the screen is cute, and yes, it gives you information, but we came up with the idea, why not build a box here that just has a little pointer? And every time the satellite comes within your range, it locks onto the satellite and tracks it, so you can actually point in the sky where it is. Hook it up to a laser pointer, put it in a room, and yep, there's your satellite going across the sky. Don't have to worry about being in daylight, don't have to worry about being out, outdoors in the cold, at night, like right now, or dealing with clouds. That was open source from the get-go. It's out there on GitHub, you can go have fun with it. Okay? I'll be the first one to admit, generation one hardware, it sucked. Okay, generation two hardware is what's up there now. We expect to have generation three at the end of the year. But go have fun. We want you to have fun. We want you to learn this stuff. Because, the reason why I believe in open source is because what happened to me when I was a, a kid. Ooh, the folks on YouTube are gonna hate me. I just smacked into the mic. Um, Sherman set the Wayback Machine to 1981. Yeah, <laughs> I'm that old. Um, and while I'm in, in middle school, I'm introduced to a Commodore PET 4016 computer. What does it do? Well, it's a computer. Yeah, I know, what does it do? Uh, the teachers had no idea. So, can I program it? And my instructor, Mr. Vigil, mathematics, he goes over to his file cabinet, he opens the, the drawer, pulls out the manual, throws it on my desk and says, if you can figure it out, it's all yours. I had all the computer time I could possibly dream of. And thus, I was corrupted. Um, <laughs> I learned how to program in BASIC, FORTRAN, assembly. C eventually showed up. It was like, wow, there's all this stuff. Anybody ever type a program out from a magazine where you just, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. There was a joy in that. And usually there was a typo you had to go and find. At least one, okay. The idea here is that we want this software to be a starting point for someone else to improve what we are doing. Because I was given that opportunity as a teen. Here, go figure it out. Here, go figure it out. Here's the toys. Here's the plans for the hardware. You got a 3D printer? Print it all off. Make your own. Make it better. Have fun. That was the objective. There's no point in being a company if you're not giving back. That is a tenant of mine. Number one thing in my company is my employees. Customers next, shareholders last. Boy, the shareholders hate that. But the reality is if you take care of your employees, your employees take care of the customers. If the customers are taken care of, your shareholders are taken care of. Wow, doesn't that work nice? Okay. So we have fun. We do all this stuff. We want to make it so that people are willing to come in and do the same work that we're doing and enjoy it. So this all ties back together to open source. My crew is adamant about open source. Okay. Originally when SpaceX was created, there's a decision to be made. There's a lot of IP in that box. Giving it away is giving away an edge, an opportunity. Is it worth it? I think so. It's a matter of just what your impression is of the world. Okay, so now we come to the part where it's all your guys' time. I'll take anything. Questions, comments, and disparaging remarks are encouraged. <laughs> Anyone? Do we have a launch coming up? Yes, we actually have three scheduled already. Okay, we've got four satellites on, uh, on tap. 
The next one will be a Firefly, hopefully. <laughs> then after that, we have a SpaceX launch, and then we have another SpaceX launch, back to back to back. Space X? Space X. No, no. This, this space Exploration Technologies, Elon's company. Uh, SpaceX, by the way, does not fly to space. If you put it in a vacuum chamber and doing what's called a bake-out, you will end up with a very interesting pile of goo. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, just as a warning, PLA and space don't mix. Not that I know from practical experience. Um, let's just say that I've tried a little bit of everything, and usually it goes bad. So understand the limitations. Absolutely right. The, the orbit has an impact on how much radiation shielding you need. The Apollo spacecraft needed a lot of radiation shielding. They didn't know the technology yet, so they went with minimal, so those guys got hit with a serious dose. Okay. But in low Earth orbit, it's not as much of a problem as a geostationary orbit. Okay. At 350 kilometers up, there is still atmosphere, such that if we don't have propulsion, yeah, we're coming back. By the way, we're 100% environmentally conscious. Anything that hits the atmosphere goes poof. The only thing that could possibly survive, according to the ODAR, which is the Orbital Debris um, Assessment Report, are the uh, antennas on this one, and that's because they're made out of tape measure. The satellite will disappear before the, the antennas do, and then they will just flutter back to Earth. Chance of hitting somebody and hurting them 0.00001%. It is not zero, therefore you have to record it. Okay. But yeah, the atmosphere has some shielding to it. And it's a Raspberry Pi. We have a watchdog that's sitting there that's watching the Raspberry Pi, and another one of the, the watchdogs is watching the watchdog. Okay. Do things in threes. Even the memory is broken down into three pieces. We check the memory across all three. If two of them agree, the third one is wrong, and we fix it right then and there. Don't wait. Okay. Now, coronal mass injection could, in fact, cause us some serious harm. We're working on that. One of the things we're looking to do is integrate radiation shielding directly into the 3D printing process and replace the outside FR4 with radiation hardened 3D printed material. That's how you solve it. Thank you. You're welcome. Regulatory. <laughs> All right. Let me, uh, I, no individual piece in this satellite costs more than $2,000. Okay. To license it, was $15,000. You want to license a constellation, you better start writing a uh, six-figure check. The regulatory process is the most expensive, not only in dollars, but in manpower. Okay? That was the surprise that really got me when we were doing this. Like I said, I backed into this. Let me tell you, regulatory is terrible. Is that per launch? That's per launch, because it doesn't count if you switch it. So like when Serenity fell off the spacecraft, and we wanted to do this. Fortunately, we didn't have to start all over. We had the paperwork already done, so we saved that money, but we still had to pay for all of it to be filed, all of their lawyers to look over it, another set of lawyers to look over it. Yeah, you can get, get the drill. It's expensive to do. Can you put Serenity on a firefly? What other words are you saying? Yes! All right! <laughs> you got it. Okay, you had a question? Who are our customers? Right now, the United States Air Force is our biggest customer. We have a customer who is also interested in doing blockchain. I, I'm not going to judge. In space. Blockchain. In space. Right, it's actually to look at what bit flipping does to the blockchain process. So there is valid 
th there's a valid reason for it. And then we do a lot with nonprofits. Like uh, Serenity was repeated for a third time. It's going again. Um, if you want a satellite, we'll build it. But our objective is to build a constellation of 400 satellites that will be monitoring the Earth, which means every point on the Earth can be viewed every 15 minutes. Imagine the power of having anomaly detection across the globe with something like that. Yes? Um, not development speed or ship time. Again, this was ready to fly. It is licensed in New Zealand to go to space. It was going to go on rocket labs, OK? Because you have to get licensing there as well as the United States. And the FCC said, um, uh-uh. Okay. We missed integration fighting the regulatory issues. Eh, you learn. It only cost me $28,000 for that flight. Yes? We have, okay, just like car manufacturers, we've decided to specialize in certain models, okay? We have the 3U, if you want it, okay? This is the Serenity series. We have the Omni series, which has a massive camera out the back. It fits in a space called a tuna cam. Then we have our Aurora series, and we have our Challenger series, okay? Challenger is a 3P, so cut this in half, shrink it just a little bit, and that's what a 3P is. But yeah, we have, these are our models. We aren't adding any more. It's too complex. It can take up to a year to design a new frame or bus. Stop that, <laughs> okay? Figure it out, make it modular, and be done with it. Unfortunately, it kind of sucks. There are maybe three companies that I know that are actively putting open source space hard, hardware and software designs out, and we're one of them. And that's, a, that's a, a sad testament, especially since a lot of them are using open source components to build their modules. If you're taking from the community, you better be getting, putting back to the community. Okay? Something that corporations seem to have forgotten Okay. If you're going to take, you got to give. And yeah, there are only a, only a handful, if that. I, I know three. There might be more. Including your own. Including our own. Yep. Um, uh, Kubos uh, open sourced all of their software, which is mission tracking software. And I can't remember the third one right now. Okay, this industry is undergoing consolidation. So the players yesterday might not be the players today. Thank you. Ah, forest fires, water quality. Okay, remember I said I was a water quality engineer? Okay, water quality engineer, fancy term for he who runs around in sewers. Okay, I covered eight states looking at water and wastewater treatment facilities and making certain that they were in compliance with the EPA. Okay. It is not a fun job, but someone needs to do it. And so I did it for three years, and I saw just how bad everything was. Okay. How many remember a little while ago here in Lancaster, they turned off the water and switched to the backup system because they had gotten raw sewage into the intakes? Before that happened, there was a temperature change in the Susquehanna River. If you, that had been identified, and sent to the plant manager or plant operator, they could have said, hey, let's close the valves for a minute, switch over to backup, see what's going on, wait for it to pass, switch it over, and would have saved the taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars on that clean out. Forest fires, methane, crops with synthetic aperture radar, it is possible to look at what's going on six inches below the ground. We can see when drought is coming before anyone else does if you apply it correctly. Or how about telling the farmer, hey, your back 40 acres are starting to go dry and have been for the last couple of years as data piles up. You might want to consider planting something that's drought resistant there. 
mitigating climate change by adapting to it. Every day. <laughs> Every tool has dual use. Use number one is what it's intended for. Use number two is typically to maim or kill someone. A hammer can kill someone. A pencil can kill someone. Batman, you know, the Joker, he demonstrated that. It's the intent. I can't stop the intent. What I can do is control the data. And if I find out you're a bad actor, turn your data off. Yeah, I can deorbit one of these satellites with a click. Well, actually two. Click you, bye bye. It's gone. Okay. <laughs> yes. Ah. Another good question. Yes, the idea is the data is only useful in the immediate. Anomaly detection is only good for now. Okay? Now, we collect all of that data because we hope that citizen scientists, as well as real researchers out there in the world, and I do differentiate the two. There's citizen science. Hello. I don't have a degree. And then there are scientists who have a you know, degree or multiple degrees who do this kind of thing. This research will be available to them six months after we collect it at no charge. So our window of making money is that first six months. Kind of crazy. I've probably gone way over time. Yes, I have. I am so sorry. I'm cutting into you. <laughs> Ryan, where are you? Where are you? Yeah, I'm cutting into your time. I'm so sorry. All right, and I apologize for that. As you can tell, I'm a little passionate about what I do. Um, if you're not passionate about it, don't do it because the heartache hurts. Thank you, everyone, for your time. My contact information. We will have a five or so minute break while we switch over, and then we'll be back. So if you need to use restroom, get a drink, whatever, have a good time. I felt like I was going to run out.